We wanted to begin uh, with a responsive reading for the new year. Um, you're going to read the part that's in bold. I'm going to read the part that's not. Uh, if you're at home, uh, please go ahead and, and participate in this. Let this be a prayer. Let this be something that we all lift up to the Lord. Let's begin. Lord, it's a brand new day. It's also a brand new year. And so we begin in your presence with a heart still and sincere. And early will we seek thee and strive to go thy way. So fill us with your spirit and grant us peace this day. Lord, please help us to walk to the vocation of our call. Please help us not to stumble. Please help us not to fall. And please give us boldness for those perilous times are here. So help us to walk in the spirit and in continuous prayer this brand new year. Amen. fail me now you won't fail me now in the way the same God who's never late is working all things out you're working all things out oh yes I will if you hide in the lowest valley yes I will bless your name I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will. Let's lift us up this morning as we look at this new year together. And I count on one thing the same God never fails, will not fail me now, you won't fail me now, in the waiting, the same God who's never late, is working all things out, you're working all things out, oh yes I will, if you hide in the lowest valley, yes I will. Bless your name, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days, yes, I will for all my days, yes, I will, and I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the stand against and I choose to praise to glorify glorify the name of all names that nothing can stand against oh yes I will lift you high in the lowest valley yes I will bless your name yes I As the staff here at Epic have been praying about this new year for us as a church, one of the things we just kept coming back to is, you know, we don't want to be a church that just fills your head with information. We don't want these services just to be facts about God. Those, those are very important, and we need those to 
structure our life, to focus them, to shape our thoughts and our actions. What really does that is experiencing the Lord. What really does that is humbling ourselves to put us in a place to where we can experience Him. I know any time that um, I failed to hear Him, it's been a lot of times it's been my own pride, my own inability, my own unwillingness to sacrifice myself and to take the cross and follow Him. I've wanted to be in control wanted to be the one in charge of my life. But anytime we're in that place, we don't experience in Him. We experience ourselves. And I'm going to be honest with you, we get pretty bored with ourselves as we should because only God knows what's best for us. So for this new year, I want us to be a church that is okay with uh, taking chances is okay with not wanting control and is okay with trusting the Lord not just for our church but for your own life I want you to trust the Lord so that everything we do we can lift him up we want to be a church that as this next song says does magnify him wherever he has us. So I pray that this morning, don't let this morning just be tradition, a ritual, a, a habit. Though there are good habits and we're thankful that you are here with us. But let this morning be that first step into releasing yourself and taking hold of God. Experience him. Experience him. With a thousand tongues to lift one cry Then from north to south and east to west We'd hear Christ be magnified Were the whole earth echoing his eminence, his name would burst from sea and sky, from rivers to the mountain tops, we'd hear Christ be Christ 
up this morning. I won't bow down to idols. I stand strong and worship you. And if it puts me in the fire, I'll rejoice because you're there too. I won't be formed by feelings. I hold fast to what is true. If the cross brings transformation, I'll be crucified with you Cause death is just the doorway Into resurrection life And if I join you in your sufferings Then I'll join you when you rise Then when you return in glory With all the angels and the saints My heart will still be singing My song will be Christ be magnified, let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me and all. Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified.
Praising you is more than just lifting our voices one day a week. It is following your word. It is experiencing you. It is meditating on your word. It is spending time in solitude and silence with you. And all that we do, may we praise you and lift you up. We pray through the Spirit and the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You guys can be seen. Well, good morning. You guys can talk even though you have masks on. Good morning, those of you that are here with us, as well as those of you who are online joining us. Happy New Year. Hey, who isn't excited for a new year, right? Um, How many of you have any goals, dreams, or aspirations for this year? You can raise your hand. Have you thought about it at all? Are you those New New Year's resolutions kind of people? What better time than right now to make a change, right? As the beginning of every year, we're given this opportunity to reflect, to bring about change in our lives. We have a chance to start over, start something new, do something better than we've ever done. And there's nothing wrong with this. There's nothing wrong with new goals, dreams, aspirations, resolutions. Of course, sticking to them is a whole different story, right? But I don't want you to shy away from the annual opportunity to start something new, to bring about positive change in your life. In fact, I want to encourage you to do that. I want to encourage you to have some positive change. In fact, I want you to also include some change that might draw you closer to the Lord. We're gathered this morning, whether in person or virtually, to seek the Lord, to pursue His heart, to follow Him in His ways. And so what can we do as we begin this new year with so many things that we're thinking about from this past year as well as what might be this year? What is it that the Lord wants us to implement, to change, to set as our goal and our focus and our vision? Well, this morning as individuals and as a community... 
I want us to think about how we can be wise in how we live our lives. And I can't think of a better place than Psalm 1 to turn to, to just hear from the Lord a call to be wise and to follow the paths that the Lord has for us. The opening psalm, Psalm 1, serves as an introduction to the whole book of Psalms. But I think it's also a good text for us as we begin this new year. If you take it uh, seriously, this first psalm will urge you to think wisely about your life and about the current path that you are on. And so I want you to think about that this morning. This psalm paints a picture of how life works. It serves as creative imagery for life. And so if you have your Bibles, grab them and turn to Psalm 1. I've asked Michelle to come and to read our text this morning. And I want us to think about what the Lord has to say to us as we reflect upon last year and begin to look forward to this new year. And so, Michelle, if you'll read Psalm 1 to us, let's hear the word of the Lord together. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields, fruit, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaves do, does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the ways of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Hmm. Pray with me. Our Father, we pause in this moment to turn and ask that you would speak to us. We're here to have a word from you that will direct our paths, that will light up our way. And so in a, in a day where we begin a new year, we pause this first Sunday of the year to ask you to Lord over our lives and for us to allow your presence and your power and your love and your goodness and your grace to just fall on us even now. That you would bless our lives and our church for your name's sake. That we would see you work in mighty ways. That we would notice you doing extraordinary things even in the ordinary moments of our lives. Because you are a good God that loves us and we want to follow you. And all God's people said. Amen. Psalm 1. If you'll continue just to look at this psalm with me, it's a powerful contrast between the wise and the unwise. And this distinction is not exclusively found here. In fact, if you look throughout the Bible, you'll see this distinction mentioned numerous times. The Word of God has a way of dividing humanity into two absolute and even opposite categories, two with extremely different outcomes in life. And so to paraphrase the straightforward way of Jesus, he puts it this way. You're either on the broad road that leads to destruction, or you're on the narrow road that leads to life. The first psalm that we're looking at here forces us to beware, to be cautious, to be mindful as we make our next step in life. It causes us to reflect as well as to look forward as to where we're headed. It reminds you that the choices that follow this instruction will make or break you. And so think about it this way. Right now, your life is headed down a path, and you need to know where that path is taking you. At least an idea as to where it might be taking you. If not, you may end up somewhere you're never wanting to go in the first place. And so if you aren't pleased with the full current trajectory of your life, even in minor ways... I want you to reconsider the path that you're on. If you don't, you might find yourself in the company of those who are extremely disappointed or even find themselves on a destructive path. You see, the main purpose of this psalm is to warn people to avoid life without God. It's as if we tend to only rely on God when we need Him, to cry out in help or when things are frustrating when they don't make sense. But what would happen if we started with a trust and a reliance and dependency upon God to seek His wisdom first? Perhaps maybe we won't have as many detours along the way. 
This is important. It's a matter of life and death, both literally and figuratively. We all know people that make choices and decisions, and we see what happens into their life because of those decisions. We see the consequences that come, whether good or bad. We see what happens to their life. And so I want you to reflect. I want you to envision what life might look like moving forward for you as well. Because the Bible makes clear over and over that life without God is disastrous. Now, it may seem a little obvious or maybe even a little harsh, but let's keep looking a little closer at this psalm to see what it teaches us about our path. And more specifically, the contrast between the wisdom of the godly and the foolishness of those who are godless. Look at the blessing that we see in Psalm 1. It begins with the blessing. Blessed is the man, or happy is the one. You can kind of think beatitudes here for a minute. And then once it blesses those who follow the Lord, we see this wise way of living. It's described in a negative light. Look here with me. While it begins with this expression of good fortune, we quickly see what the wise are to avoid. The wise do not walk in step with the wicked, stand in the way that sinners take, nor sit in the company of mockers. Verse 1. To be fair, we still take this approach today. Before we think about what we're supposed to do, sometimes we talk about what we're not supposed to do to really understand what it is we're supposed to do. If you're telling someone how to live better financially, to be blessed financially, you may say, do not eat out more than twice a week. Do not buy anything without budgeting, and so on and so on. It's, it's a similar concept that we see here with the psalmist, the author of Psalm. He's trying to show us that by talking about what we're not to do, we can understand better as an explanation and even as a warning what it is we are to do. And so look at this with me. Look in verse 1. There's three sets of parallels even in this first verse. We see these three types of action. We see these three types of wrongdoers and these three types of association to these sort of ungodly folks all of which lead or point to a godless way of life. That is, a way of life that has no care or concern for God. This path is often, just so you know, a subtle downward spiral. It's not like you wake up one day and say, I'm going to be a fool. And what we see is this also progressively gets worse as we go down this path. This deceiving path, because it's an enticing path, it's easy to take the easy way, right? Listen to what John Golden Gay says. He talks about these three actions, walk, stand, and sit. Don't do these things in this particular way, Psalm 1 says. John Golden Gay says, the basic form of wrongdoing involves simple action. Foolishness involves walking by the advice of the faithless. Worse than that, it's standing in the path of moral failures, which implies more than taking the path, but standing firm in it. It's as if the heart is hardening. But behind that is sitting in the seat of mockers. That's when the, the action becomes so much in, in implied in our lives that we're not merely living one way. We're taking part in the actions and the deliberations of everything about this foolish way of life. And so, all this to say, these three types of actions, walk, stand, and sit, all describe in progressively different ways the actions that we're to avoid as we seek to make wise decisions in our life. So taken together, these show us a full picture of what's to be avoided. Don't walk, stand, or sit. And so let me put it this way. Don't flirt with, don't dabble in. Don't embrace any sort of sin, wrongdoing, or foolishness. It never gets you where you want to go. It's as if it's a parent instructing a child on something that's obvious, but even as adults, we need to hear this wisdom as we begin to make our choices, make our decisions. Our habits start to form, it, form us. The dispositions in our life, as well as just our desire that we assume is one thing, but when we follow and trace out our lives, we see that actually what our heart really desires is maybe something else. And so we want to get to the root to find out what does it mean to be wise in every decision that we make. Well, one thing we have to do is avoid these actions of walking, standing, and sitting in the foolish ways of living. Have nothing to do with any of these actions that would pull us away from a life that God has intended, the way that He has showed us to live. And so here's the way I put it. 
Don't act like a fool or you might find yourself becoming one. The second part that we see here in this first verse is not only the actions we're to avoid, but it's the wrongdoers. So allow this psalmist, allow this author to really paint a picture of someone who is striving to be wise and the things they're to avoid because we come across many opportunities, many decisions that we have to make and we need to make the most of it. And so look at the type of wrongdoers we see. The wicked, the sinners, the mockers. Now first they're called wicked. Before we just dismiss them as the bad people, the others, all of these things, look closely at what is being said. They're called wicked. That is the faithless who have no care or concern for God. Those people who forsake God. It's about self. It's about pleasure. It's about whatever I want. Second, they're referred to as sinners. That is those who have an inclination to sin. They can't get enough. They want more. And thirdly, they're referred to as mockers. That is those who tear down. They don't just walk the path and embrace it. They tear down anything that stands in opposition to the way they see life. My way or the highway, you might say. And so progressively, these evildoers all stand in direct opposition to what it means to trust and follow the Lord. Again, the key is to avoid even starting down this path. Again, it doesn't happen overnight, right? Look at the third set of parallels here. The types of association to those who are ungodly who have no care or concern for God. We are to avoid their step, their way, and their company. It's as if the Lord is saying, wake up, I have something you need to hear. This final progression makes things even worse. And so listen to this. Listening to people formulate plans is one thing. Acting on them is another. But sitting at their dinner table and sleeping in their bed is a place that no one typically emerges from. And so this psalm is reminding us and warning us, do not go down this path or you will find yourself in a place you never dreamed or desired to be. Now let me try to summarize this. The lifestyle of those who are wise are blessed because he or she does not go down this foolish path. And the authors made this clear over and over, will lead to a dead end. And so don't act like a godless fool. Don't walk, stand, or sit with the wicked sinners and mockers. And don't associate with their step, their way, or their company. Are you getting the drift is what he's trying to say. Instead, fortunately, we see some positivity here. Positively speaking, we see that the author stresses that the wise one is blessed because they delight in the instruction and the law of the Lord. Look at verse 2. This is where the wise put their stock. And so instead of dismissing or caring less about what God has to say, turning to God, fixing their eyes on God, starting with God's blessing and desire, they delight on the ways of the Lord. And they enjoy His way of life. What would that be like if we enjoy the ways of the Lord? Maybe finding out that this is wisdom because it's good and right and even delightful. Now, when we think of laws as delightful, it's a little strange to us. We assume that laws are just rules about how we're supposed to live, and there's an aspect to that, but there's more that's going on here. And so look at the heart of what's being said. A better way of putting this may not just be delight in God's laws, but instead it should be also delight in God's teaching, His ways, His paths. It's this idea of trusting God. God's way of life. And how do we know God's way if we don't turn and seek His ways, His heart? And His instructions, if if you think about it for a moment, God's instructions are given out of His deep love for us. So again, they're not just things we have to do. They're pathways that get us where we really want to go. So why would we not turn to the Lord? So if we're not getting it yet, what we're to avoid, as well as what we're to focus on, delighting in the ways and the teachings of the Lord, we then have a picture. The author paints us a picture. Who doesn't enjoy some pictures? To communicate what's being said, in case you missed what's being articulated here, we see the psalmist say, the wise one's like a fruitful tree planted by streams of water whose leaves never wither. Whatever they do prospers, and they thrive in every way. I think that's clearly what we all want. 
As for those who have good care less about God, they're like chaff that the wind blows away, tumbleweed. They're unstable, they're restless, they're lifeless, they're exposed. Like a fine mist or dust, they're easily blown away. They hold no meaningful weight in areas of importance. And now, while I don't consider myself in the ungodly camp, I will admit that there are many times that I struggle. And this is where we can get very real and honest. To to move away from this truth of God, to allow it to move into our own hearts and lives, to examine our hearts, to have the Spirit search our hearts, perhaps to see that there's times where we aren't at all or aren't fully rooted in the source of of life and blessing and delight. It's easy to act a fool, to think you know what's best, to do what you want and what feels good. But that's why the psalmist urges us to choose wisely and to do so on a daily basis. And so I want, to, I want you to think about your life right now. I want you to reflect upon the path that you're on. How can we make every single moment count? Every interaction, every decision. And when we mess up, we fail or we fall, how can we get back up? And how can we get back on the path that leads to the Lord and His righteousness, His goodness, His right way of living? You see, in short, this psalm reminds us, as Jesus does in full, that the person who devotes themselves to God's wisdom and way of life, the way of King Jesus, is the one who finds God's love and grace all along the movements of our path. And if it's left unaddressed, we will find out those who have no regard to God or His way of living will fall short and will quickly find themselves in tragedy. Unfortunately, our world has it backwards. Think about this for a moment. It believes that the godly... Those are the ones who are miserable. They're the ones that have to wear a mask and come to church on Sunday on the first Sunday of the year. Those who, those who live carefree from God's thoughts or His obligations, those are the ones who find all the fun, right? But as many of you know, and the reason you're here, I believe, this morning, and those that you are, of you who are tuned in are present because experience proves that the author of this psalm knows what he's talking about. Left to our own plans, we're bound for failure. Look at verse 6. We're told that the Lord watches over the ways who are wise and righteous, but the wicked, their path, the foolish, leads to destruction. This doesn't mean that life for the righteous is easier without trouble. I know many of you this morning have your own set of troubles and worries and pressures. But this does mean that God promises to take care of and be with those who trust and follow Him. And that's a huge promise that I want to begin my year with, that I never want to forget. God is with us. He's for us. He is faithful. Now before we wrap things up, here's what I want to do. I want to take a moment to reflect. I can't help but think more than just talking about this psalm. I want us to see our own lives, where we're headed, where we're going. And so, what path do you find yourself on right now? I want you to examine for a moment, audit your life, if you will. What habits are forming you? Where do you spend your time, energy, and money? What are the core desires of your life? Who are you becoming right now? How can we then recalibrate ourselves if we aren't feeling like we're on the path we truly want to be on? Well, I want to give you a few ways that you can consider refocusing, recalibrating your heart and your life so that you can connect to the source of God and His strength. Focus on what matters and wholeheartedly connect to God. Let me give you a few practical thoughts this morning. Number one, Spend time with God. Set aside time to pray and dive into God's Word. If it's hard for you to know where to start, come talk to me. Talk to someone who can help you set up some habits and rhythms 
that will help you go down the path you really want to go, even though other things may be pulling you in different directions. Make it a priority. In fact, start today if you have to. Some of you have some of these habits, and maybe they become stale. How can you rekindle that fire that's been lost? You know, the Bible Project. The Bible Project has some plans that um, allow you to read the Bible throughout a year or even longer. And some of you can follow that step and need that rigid discipline because you know it's good. And I encourage you to check out their website. There's many of others out there, but you can also print off on their website and go through it at your own pace if you feel like it's too daunting to cover exactly what you need each week. But I can promise you this, if we open ourselves up to the Lord each and every day and start our day off right and make sure our day is centered around the Lord, we'll find our, or find, we will find that the path that we're on is a lot more conducive to what we desire than if we don't. We'll find out that life makes a lot more sense and there's a lot more delight. Spend time with the Lord. Next, spend time with people who genuinely love God. You can even ask someone to spend intentional time with you. Maybe it's been far too long since you've had someone push you, coach you, encourage you, kick you in the tail, whatever it is that you need to follow the Lord. And this can be done by talking to someone in your community, talking to a godly role model. And some of you just may need to talk to a godly counselor. I can't tell you how many people, myself included, who have been able to receive so much encouragement from godly counsel. It's not something we get to talk about, nor do I want to talk about the blessings of counseling in your life and lay out everything you guys have been through or I've been through, but I do want to say, if I ask people to raise their hands, so many people can say they are who they are today or they found victory over things or they found God's blessing, His presence because they sought the counsel of someone who can help them. Spend time with people that genuinely love God. Talk to us. Let us help you on this area. Next, spend time investing into people who need Jesus or need more of Jesus. There are a lot of people hurting right now. And you're probably in that camp too because we're in a difficult season of life, many of us. But let's not just look at it of all the difficulty and gratitude that the Lord has given us so many blessings. Let's view in God's mercies the blessings that we have and let's share that with others. And so who in your mind right now, you may write this down, you may let this just be branded on your heart, but who is someone that you can invest into? Here's what I've learned. Life is miserable if you only focus inwardly. If you wonder why your life is so miserable, maybe it's because all you're concerned about is yourself. That doesn't mean you have to go out and save the world. We know who's already done that. But we can be a part of this mission and join in and find delight by spending time with God and investing into others. This is discipleship, evangelism, all those key words we talk about. But it's needed. It's life on life. And we need to connect. And so invest into others. Fourth, and lastly, spend some good time reflecting upon your current path. What unhealthy or perhaps even ungodly areas in your life need to be addressed? Maybe some actions or habits. Anything from maybe you're drinking way too much to becoming easily angered, to neglecting your health, to being foolish with your money to neglecting relationships, to living a life of apathy, to thinking you're better than others, to thinking you're worthless or you're a lost cause, whatever it is. We all have things that eat away at our heart and soul, whether they're self-inflicted or not. And so as you think about your path and the obstacles in the way, the shackles that are holding you down, let's pursue freedom. Let's reflect upon how we can release these shackles or how they can be released by the power of God's grace and goodness. We can't do it alone. And so remember the other things we talked about, leaning on the Lord and other people. But whatever it is that may need to be addressed in your life, as we begin this new year, take it to the Lord and take it to another fellow believer. 
so that you can find healing help. You're not alone on this. We all need to be encouraged. We all need to experience God's presence and power and grace. And so if you're fed up with your current path, you can do something about it. You don't have to give up. You don't have to give in. You can be honest, you can be brave, and you can be vulnerable. Jesus said, follow me. Now it's our move. Choose wisely. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Pray with me. Our Father, I thank you for the practical ways your word urges us to be wise. And I ask that we begin to take this truth and the pictures that you've showed us of the pathways that lead to destruction, to to a bitter end. We ask that you would give us the, the courage and the faith and the grace to turn from that way and turn to you, which you call repentance. And as you call us to repentance, may we truly Find freedom and grace and goodness in your love and your presence. And we need each other. That's why you've given us this community. Whether in person or virtually, I ask that we would all be prompted by your spirit to know specific ways, actions that we can take to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Oh God, we love you and we trust you and we thank you for your goodness and grace. May this be the best year we've had in honor of you and your life that you've given to us. May we give our lives to you and trust you with the results. Let's stand together. We wanted to sing a hymn of prayer. This can be a prayer that we all have each day, each morning. The Lord will speak to us. Speak, O Lord, as we come to you to receive food of your holy word. Take your truth Planted deep in us, shape and fashion us in your likeness, that the light of Christ might be seen today in our acts of love and our deeds of faith. Speak, oh.
church that trusts. And we are a church that loves. And we are people that above all else looks to you. That our faith is not just an add-on. Our faith is not just some other part of who we are. But our faith is our identity. That Jesus Christ is who we are. The gospel is what we live for. And when people look at us, they see you. Pray through the Spirit, by the blood of Jesus Christ. 